Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming Film Animation. Uh, now what we're looking at is how we can get this uh, sword that we have just exported out as an FBX into the Unreal Engine. Then after that we'll look at how we can export it into the character's hand, but for now we just want it as a static mesh prop in the level just for decorative uh, and then we'll look at maybe a small bit of physics just to round it off. So, I'm going to go here, go create a new folder called Props. Going to go in here, uh, weapons, and this one, sword. Cool. So for this, I am going to go to my Maya project where I exported that out. So if I set my Maya project correctly, then inside scenes there should be these ones here. So I can just check this by opening this up with FBX review. And there it is, sword's in the right position, textures all look fine, it's all looking pretty good. So I'm confident that if we bring this into Unreal now and there's any glitches, then that means that I'm not doing something right with the importing. So when you drag and drop an FBX in to this content browser here, you should immediately be prompted with this FBX import options here. Now we're going to leave the scale as zero, as one, sorry, because we've already done the scaling side of Maya. That's a good workflow to get into. Because if you change things here, it can sometimes mess up some of the scaling later on. Uh, I'm going to... I can generate missing, missing collisions. We'll probably adjust the collisions a little bit later anyway. Um, but yeah, that is fine. It's using the material local. That's good. We'll go import. It will normally always give this error. It's to do with FBX and how it um, smooths and um, compresses things. But it's not game breaking. Now... This is another thing that you may encounter, and that's that there's no textures here. Um, you just get a white ball, and when we look at our sword, none of the materials are on there. That is because earlier versions of Unreal do not accept PN, uh, TIFF files, which if you've been on um, uh, textures.com, they're all TIFF files. Later versions will accept TIFF files and convert them into PNGs, but this is version 4.26, so anything earlier than that, you have to bring the PNGs in manually. That's not too much trouble. I can go back into my Ag for Engage sword, go to my source materials, and I can see that all of my um, files are here, and I've already converted them to PNG files. So we're going to take the albedo, the emission, the normal, and the roughness. I'm going to bring that here, and then just drag and drop them in, like so. Now, it's going to say here, texture sword was imported as a normal map and I'm going to click OK, not revert. That's because I want to use the purple color information here, not as a color texture map, but as a normal map. That's all that is there. So I'm just going to double click on this material here. So this is Unreal's material node. Uh, this is where we create materials. So in Maya, if you wanted to create a material, uh, you had to sort of select it over here and go over here and then go through this thing of going and finding the file putting them all in like that. We don't have to do that in Unreal. We've got a node editor for that, and that's what this is here. So I've just got to now drag in these files. So I'm just going to select them all, left click and drag them in there, um, wait for them to load up, and then we'll start seeing where we plug them in. It's all very straightforward though. This one here is the albedo map or our color map. So I'm just going to plug it from RGB straight into here. Then here, this is our emission map. So I'm just going to plug that straight into emission. Got to get this texture map here, plug that into normal, and then I've got a roughness map here. So I'm going to actually plug that up here into roughness. Um, you may have a metallic map, you can plug that in as well to get a nice sort of shine on this. At the moment this is looking a bit too shiny, so I'm actually going to pull out of here for metallic, type in constant, and set that to something a little bit more reasonable, because at the moment like 1 is probably a bit too much, so I'm going to go 0.5. Okay, so you can see a little bit more reflective. That's actually um, making it a little bit stronger. So I've got to go 0.2. Making it more rough is probably the answer. So, or less. Yeah, I reckon actually leaving it. There will be nice. So we'll save. And. Then we'll have a look at our object. So if I double click on this, I'll see it's called a static mesh, uh, which it is, that's good. 
the pivot point to the right spot it all seems to be good there um, later on when we start looking at it as a weapon we'll start talking a little bit about these collisions and how they work but for now we'll keep them as simple as that because that'll work as a physics object so I can now left click drag and drop this into the level and as we can see it's about the right size which is good like when I'm looking at it there it's going to look the right size for me to be able to pick up as you can see though, my character's back into it, nothing's happening. Um, you may not want that. If you do want to change that, you can always go up here and set uh, physics as simulate on. Which I'm pretty sure is in here. If that's not in there, you can just set it as an individual item here. And now what that means is it'll just move around as a physics object. Got to be careful with physics objects. They're fun to play around with, but they can cause all kinds of glitches. So you don't want to use this all the time. You wouldn't want to make all of these objects um, physics or anything else like that. But anyway, that's all we really need to cover here of how we get it into the level. In the next video, we're going to look at, okay, how can we spawn this in the character's hand to make sure that like when we press a button, um, the character will just spawn it in their sword. And then we'll look at, okay, picking that sword up.